Hi everyone. Um, I was watching a video recently about um, ME um, and I've seen a few of these made by the various ME charities um, and they nearly always show people with ME when they're at their best, um, when they're able to articulate themselves and their symptoms are quite low. And they often end with, the, though these people look well in the video, that afterwards they have a, a relapse and it, the effects of it can be seen. And it, it seems curious to me why any charities choose almost to hide the facts from people. Um, that they, they don't want people to be seen when they're at their worst. Now it might be that people don't want to be seen when they're at their worst. Um, I, I know that, that for some the idea of people seeing them when they are really ill is not an easy thought but the only way for people to start to understand that this illness is m m more than just being tired all of the time is to show people when they are at their worst, when they are struggling to get their thoughts out, when they are struggling with things like walking, um, when to actually see people when they are suffering because at the moment the impression that is being given unwittingly I think by some of the ME charities um, is, is that having ME is simply about being tired and feeling a little fluey <laughs> and if only it was about just being tired, needing to sleep. I know I've been fortunate because I've not been bed bound. Um, and so I, my, my ME is, um, is reasonable and I am still able on occasions to get out, although um, <laughs> if I look and see what I was able to do before I become ill, I would say I'm functioning on less than 50% of my capacity and when I do do these things there is always payback but we need to show people sorry about the cuckoo clock to show people what this illness is like when we are at our worst um, I think YouTube has been good for that because I know a number of people such as myself have made videos n not when we're at our best but when we are actually st struggling and at our worst. If only the ME charities would take this up, perhaps take some of the videos from YouTube with people's permission, splice them together and make them look professional and use them as a means of showing the variety of, of problems that people who have ME have. Not just to talk about them, but to actually show them. Because um, it, it, until people see what it's really like, until people are shocked into seeing that this illness is, is serious, it will never be taken. Seriously, but I think also some of the ME charities are so frightened of frightening people, particularly the newly diagnosed, that they try to play down the seriousness of it. And it, it doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help um, those in particular who are severely affected. Um, and I think the time has come really where things need to to change. Um, ME needs to be seen for what it really is. That it really is damaged to the central nervous system and the, 
The symptoms can be vast um, depending on um, how the brain has been affected. Um, the evidence of damage to the brain has been there for, for years but has been hidden from um, uh, the general public um, by different psychiatrists who wanted to build a psychiatric slant, the government, and actually even ME charities have not been upfront about the, the damage that ME can cause. But never forget that it was originally called um, atypical polio myelitis because it was so much like polio. Um, in the way that it affects the, 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 the nervous, central nervous system. And people seem to forget that. And it's amazing, it amazes me how dot medical history seems to forget what happened before 1988 and the outbreaks in America. All the research that was done prior to that time um, and since, um, the idea of the epidemic seems to have been forgotten in the midst of time um, and I, I know I've struggled about whether this is ME or not and I guess I, in some ways until there's a definite way of diagnosing it there will always be but when I think back to the time when I become ill although I've often said about the flu jab what I've often forgotten or I've not mentioned was that before that I had uh, numerous mild um, digestive um, illnesses you know um, and, um, and I think the flu jab was just a final <laughs> straw for me um, and I know that enteroviruses in particular are stomach viruses so um, it, it, it looks more and more the more I think about it but, but yeah that, um, that that is likely um, Anyhow, I am starting to ramble. My, my train of thought is going. I won't bore you with any more, but just to think carefully about how we talk about this condition and how it's portrayed in the media, not only by the media, but by ME charities. It's important that people see this as it is when people are at their worst. Now I know not everyone is as bad. I'm not as bad as some and that there are some that are not as bad as, as me. But it needs to be seen where it's at its worst because there needs to be something to make people stand up and look. If you remember the, the, the thing with the AIDS, it was only the pictures of seeing people suffering that made things happen. and. We need to make it obvious and to stop trying to hide and make this look as if this is just um, something minor that can be swept under the carpet. So I've had my little ramble and my little rant. Whether anyone will take the slightest bit of notice of this, <laughs> it remains to be seen. But um, that's me for now. I I'm going to go and... <laughs> probably spend the rest of the day on the couch. Bye for now.